So there are three ways of doing this uh, that we'll, we'll be talking about. The first, if you want to try it yourself, you, just, you can just load it into TechBlot and write it out as, as, as a sizzle file. And then you can see for yourself with your data how it performs. The second way you can do it is you can take that same process and automate it with scripts. And so essentially it's launching in a script, TechBlot 360 and doing it. This is, would work in, a, say, in one of your CFD scripts to automatically generate these from a, another type of file. Pretty much any type of file that you can load into TechPod 360, you can do this. And finally, Dr. Dave here is going to talk about uh, writing the sizzle files directly from your code using uh, the TechIO library. So how do you write uh, sizzle files from TechPod? It's really easy, actually. You load your data in the standard way, whatever data loader you're using. It doesn't matter, except we don't currently support polyhedral grids. Then you, from that same menu, the file menu, you go down to the write data file and then and you select the TechBlot subzone data writer in the file open dialog. So that's, that's essentially all there is to it. It'll go through the process of creating the subzones and write, indexing the subzones and writing the data for you. If you want to automate that, TechPlot has a batch command capability. So you can just, uh, using the command line, you can just say tech360 with a dash B. Specify the data files and, and then a macro file in this case, because you, you'll need to run a macro file to actually write the sizzle file. Here's a, a simple example of how you would do that, or what the macro would look like. Uh, this is the basic macro. You can generate this yourself just by recording if you want to see uh, how it looks. Basically specifies it's the TechPlot subzone data tools add-on that is being used. And the command is write data set and then you give it the file name. Now if you're in batch mode, you want to put in this quit macro. If you're running this interactively, you don't. Now, if you want to automate the generation of this macro, um, this is an example of how to do it in a Unix shell script, just using a series of printf commands. Now, the temp file name would be something you would create, either just, it can be some sort of arbitrary file name, it's, only, it's temporary. Uh, and then you'll have on the command line an input file name, which is not needed for this because that would be in the read command. This is just a snippet of the, the shell script, but you would also have the output file name in your command line. So this would be the output file name that's been extracted from the command line, and it just generates the macro into this temporary file, and then you could, uh, below this, have uh, that command we showed you before, the tech360-b, and then specify this as that temp file name as the macro command. So what is tech.io? Well, it's a library that you link into your program. The uh, source code is available for download on our website, and you can download it and build it yourself as a static library on any of our supported platforms, and actually on quite a few other related platforms. So here are the basic APIs you call from your code to create a TechPlot data file. And this calling sequence is the same whether you're creating a PLT file or an SCPLT file. Uh, and you'll note that each of the APIs is uh, suffixed with a version number. So TechINI, uh, you use to open a new file, and this has a parameter where you specify whether you want PLT or SCPLT. Uh, TechZNE adds a zone to that file. You'll call that once for every zone. Uh, TechDAT adds data to the zone. You'll call that, and these are listed in the order that you would call them. So TechDAT adds data to the zone. Note that TechIO supports either single or double precision. Tech node is what you call if you have unstructured data, and this is the API you call to pass in the connectivity, the cell connectivity. And finally, to close the file, you call tech end. There are other APIs that I'm not showing here to add uh, text or geometries or custom labels, but these are normally stored in layout files. And I mentioned here also that you can have multiple data files open at the same time and, and be writing, say, a surface file and a, and a volume file at the same time if you want and switch between them. 
You had a question, Scott? So, so Dave, with the tech dat function, or the tech node for that matter, how do you chunk up your data there? Do you have to send each data value by itself, or do you send them all at once, or how does it work? Yeah, so uh, both of these allow you to chunk your data any way you like. You can pass them a, a single value at a time or the entire array at, a, at all at once. Uh, each of these has a parameter that where you tell TechIO how many values you're passing in. And what's the advantage of which would you do? However my data is stored in, in memory, um, these routines allow you to keep it there as opposed to having to gather it separately into uh, separate arrays, thereby duplicating some memory requirements in your code. Here's a real simple example to create a data file with a single IJ ordered zone or structured zone, a 2D structured zone. We're calling TechINI first. Now this is a Fortran example. Our next one will be in C. Uh, we call TechINI and pass it the title of the uh, data set and you'll notice for each character string we append a null character that's to make it C friendly. Uh, then a list of variables, the file name. Uh, the next one there is the temporary directory. Uh, normally dot is fine, but if you have some disk space issues you may want to be able to dump temporary files elsewhere. That's relevant really only if you're creating PLT files. Uh, for SCPLT, all the data remains in RAM uh, allocated by the TechIO library until you actually go to write the file. File format, this is where, we, that's an integer parameter where we uh, specify uh, whether we want PLT or SCPLT. Uh, the file type uh, can be full, which includes all your data, or we also support separate grid and solution files. Uh, debug, another integer parameter, gives you diagnostic output if you want, and is double is either going to be one or zero. Next, call is text E and E, where we pass the title zone and the zone type. Um, in this case, we'll have set it, I'm not showing the code here, but we'll have set it to ordered. And the dimensions of the zone. Um, and the solution time, uh, the, the, those three zeros after IMAX, JMAX, and KMAX are ignored. But all the remaining zeros and ones there relate to advanced changes, uh, variable sharing, and so on that, that aren't really important for this example. But you can look at the documentation to see what the options are for all of that. Data format guide. And it discusses not only the formats of our data, uh, but all of the tech IO APIs as well. And then finally, we're going to uh, tell tech dat how many values. As you can see, we're just dumping our X, Y, and P arrays all in at, at once with three, six calls. And we don't have any connectivity with an ordered zone, so we don't call tech node and finally we close the file with tech end. You'll notice each of these returns an integer value. Um, they'll all return zero if the call was successful and some non-zero number otherwise. Uh, the particular non-zero value won't be meaningful to you, but if you're getting one of those, it could help us uh, or tech support identify uh, that problem you're running into. Also, uh, setting up tech INI, setting that one will give you some output, some diagnostic output to your console. We also now have a parallel version of our library, which is based on MPI, the message passing interface. And this is uh, specifically to support uh, partition zones. Now, it, it supports unpartitioned zones as well, writes only sizzle files, and because we, we don't yet support uh, polyhedral data in sizzle, um, you'll be able to write your polyhedral data um, using this library. But any other zone type, you can write using the MPI library. A schematic shows an original zone, uh, four by four cells, that's been divided out into four pieces, each of which presumably is being uh, calculated by a separate processor on a parallel machine. And each one of those processors can write out its individual partition via TechIO MPI. And then um, TechPlot, when it reads the file, will reassemble those pieces into a single zone. All of these calls to TechIO will, will write to a single file, however, and we do that using the MPI IO uh, portion of MPI. To support MPI and partition zones, we've added four new APIs to the TechIO library. 
Uh, the first two are only in the TechIO MPI library, which is a separate library. But again, that's uh, installed along with TechPlot and sources available uh, from our website if you want to build a static library. So for MPI only, uh, we have Tech MPI init, uh, in which you pass it a couple of MPI-specific pieces of information. And then for partition zones, uh, this Tech ZNE map tells the, the library which processor or which MPI rank owns which partition number for a particular zone. The other two, Tech FE partition and Tech IJK partition, I, I dropped the 142 off of all of these, by the way, but those uh, final two are also in the serial library, the, the basic Tech IO library, and this lets you uh, develop your partitioned output on your uh, desktop machine, uh, which may not have MPI installed on it. Um, and test it using the non-MPI version of TechIO. And then you should, if, if that works correctly, you should expect it to work fine on the parallel machine using the TechIO MPI library. Just as only volume zones can be sizzleized, other zones can be in the sizzle, format, uh, sizzle formatted data files, but they're stored pretty much the same way as in PLT files. So only volume zones uh, benefit from sizzle and only volume zones can be partitioned. Now that said, if each uh, MPI rank is holding onto a piece of uh, a surface boundary, for example, each of them can write out its own piece of that surface data, but it will have to write it out as a separate zone. Now some specifics, finite element partitions, the TechIO library has to have information to know how to connect up each individual partition, and it does this um, through users having some ghost information. Um, it's pretty common, although not universally uh, true, that parallel flow solvers will apply boundary conditions by maintaining ghost cells, which reside just outside the boundary of each partition's calculated cells. And in order to exchange data with neighboring partitions, each processor needs to know how its ghost cells relate to the non-ghost cells of its neighboring partitions. And similarly for nodes, it needs to know how, the, how its ghost nodes connect to the non-ghost nodes of its neighbors. I've got this uh, schematically represented here where the partition on the right does not have any ghost nodes or ghost cells. The partition on the right has one column of ghost cells and two columns of ghost nodes, which overlay the uh, nodes as all the arrows indicate. They overlay the, the real nodes of the partition on the left. The uh, Tech FE partition call has some parameters where the uh, CFD developer passes in arrays of numbers indicating which of the nodes in the current partition are ghost nodes, which of the cells are ghost cells. And then for the nodes only, uh, the, the ghost cells we just don't output to the disk, but the ghost nodes we use to connect to the neighboring partition and, and the, uh, the developer also passes arrays indicating ghost which partition owns that node, the real node, and what that node number is in the neighboring partition. Here's an example using the MPI specific calls. You'll note first we get a communicator. Um, we're just using MPI COM world, but if you have a subset of MPI ranks that are doing the output, you can create your own communicator. The, the only rule is uh, every rank in the communicator has to participate in the output process because we have some collective calls which would hang up otherwise. The first uh, TechIO call is TechIO MPI init 142 where we pass it a handle to the communicator and also the identity of the main rank. This is just uh, some rank in the communicator that you designate to do all the coordination between the different ranks. We've called tech zone. I don't show it here for the sake of space, but right after we call tech zone to create a zone, we call tech ZNE map to tell TechIO how many partitions are, and for each partition, which MPI rank owns that partition. Then we call for any rank, we'll call tech FE partition 142 to pass all the information that I just talked about, the partition number, the number of nodes, the number of cells, the number of ghost nodes, and a list of those ghost nodes. And for each ghost node, the partition that owns that, so ghost nodes, GN partitions and GNP nodes are all arrays, whereas the previous parameters were all scalars. 
So in GN partitions, we pass for each ghost node which partition owns that node. And then GNP nodes tells you in that partition what is the node number of the real node that corresponds to my ghost node. Then finally we passed it a list of the number of ghost cells and the cell numbers of those cells. Following that, we call the tech node passing tech node for our partition only. And note that for any ghost nodes or cells, uh, we are going to pass in those values. They, they may or may not be used by the TechIO library. And then finally, we call TechN to close the file. And every uh, partition in the communicator needs to, needs to call that.